Why did somebody tell me there's a fan there? That's just ridiculous. All right, good morning, and welcome to yet another episode of John Works Too Much. So today, we're gonna to take this wall out, not because it needs to be out, and not because of an open, open concept kind of a feel, but because the homeowner wants to get out some aggression. She got in a fight and didn't get to actually throw a punch, and she's gonna punch this wall. <laughs> she can knock down this wall with one hand, show them. Yeah. I'll demonstrate. Stop. Knocking down the wall with one hand. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do, as we always do when we do this, okay, so look, I wanna just say this. Um, <clears throat> last summer, I started making these videos because I think that people are intimidated by working on their house and I'm trying to make it less intimidating. Like, look, it's really simple. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna support the ceiling temporarily and then we are gonna cut the wall out over way over to here-ish. And then we're going to reroute power, and then we're going to put a beam in, and once the beam's in, we're going to take the other out, and that's how that works. So um, we're excited about that. Now, there's some other things that people are intimidated by that I want to help you out, because they're not that hard either. Are you ready? Reading the Bible. I can't think of a more important thing in the world to do than get right with God. Like, there is nothing more important than you get to the end of your life, you face judgment, and you're like, whew, I got that one right. Well, good, because that matters, right? So here's an important step. People are like, you know, I feel like um, God's not talking to me. And I'm like, you're not reading your Bible. That's how he talks to us. So, you know, like read the Bible and then he will. Now, you might be like, I don't know where to start. It's so big. Well, it's not that big. It's only like 700 pages total, uh, depending on, you know, what version, how big your Bible is or whatever. It's not that big. It's made up of 66 individual books. Most of those are in the Old Testament, and then there's the New Testament. Okay, so we're just gonna focus on the New Testament for a second. Here's how it works. First, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the four Gospels. Those all tell the same story of Jesus from the time he was born until the time he was crucified and resurrected and ascended back into heaven, okay? From different points of view. There are actually many, many, many Gospels written by many people, but you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in the Bible. So that's that. <clears throat> then there's Acts. Acts talks about what happened to the apostles after Jesus resurrected um, until about the time, it, it's before Paul got executed, okay? And then there's Romans, it, there's a bunch of letters that are written by Paul, um, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, that are just short letters, right? They're not long at all, they're easy. Uh, First and Second Corinthians, uh, so on and so forth. Then there's a couple books written by James, uh, two written by Peter, three written by John, one by Jude, and then there's Revelation. And that's it, but they're all really short. Uh, so I think that if you read those, and if you don't think, I gotta read 700 pages, but instead you just think, you know, I'm gonna read this little bit, then you will get a lot out of it. And what I was surprised by when I started reading the Bible, I thought this is gonna be so boring, and you know, like what a waste of time, I gotta trudge through this, how miserable. And then I opened it up and I was like, this has all the answers to life. Why in the world have I been running away from this? Like, why didn't somebody tell me how cool this was? So I am telling you how cool this is. Start in James or a gospel or something like that. Eventually get back and read the Old Testament. It's important, you need to know that stuff too, but the gospel, like just start there in the New Testament and read something. It's not hard. If you can't afford a Bible, I'll buy you a Bible. Also, there's apps for this. You can look it up on the internet. It's everywhere, you have no excuse. All right, we're gonna tear down this wall. All right, so we got this, um, open and exposed. We took out the outlets and moved the wiring that we needed to. But I thought about the fact that maybe a lot of you don't know what pocket doors look like because I get asked to do pocket doors sometimes. I'm like, ugh, they're such a hassle. So the first thing you need to know about pocket doors, which a lot of people don't know, is that they won't actually fit in your pocket. Like, see, I actually have some pretty big pockets, but I don't think, I think it's too big, right? So that's a problem. So the way that this works, which is difficult, is um, you want to pull this up and it slides in between the wall, right? So you have to frame the wall so it's very thin. And if you penetrate through here, you're gonna hit the door and then you won't be able to open the door and close the door, which would be a problem. So uh, I don't personally like pocket doors, but that's just me. Anyway, so on this side, what we did is we figured out, we measured down uh, for where our beam's gonna sit and gave ourselves a little bit of room. And then I cut a line here and I cut a line here. And um, our homeowner is very frustrated with life right now. And I think she wants to beat somebody up or beat something up. Um, she may do that, I don't know. She may just kind of busting through this wall any minute. But it's hard to say. Whoa, God, leave that scary. What in the world? I had no idea she was so angry. What are you so angry about? <laughs> do you feel better? I really, 
really glad I'm on the wall right now. <laughs> you feel better? You feel better, Jen? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. That's but, good. Let's see how I do it. Okay, so I gotta take the tape measure off me because otherwise I'll go. You ready? And now nice. we're done. <laughs> now we're done. <laughs> Perfect. I love it when you come. All right, so come over here. Um, obviously, it's been about 28 minutes, and um, what we did is we cut everything back, got all the wires out of the way. This is, remember, a king stud goes all the way up, and then a jack stud just comes to uh, support where the beam is. Then we got this beam. It's double uh, two by 10, and then we got spacers in there because a two by is not actually two inches, it's an inch and a half. It's two inches before they plane it, and then they plane it, it's an inch and a half. So inch and a half, inch and a half is three, and this is three and a half wide, so I have to put a half inch piece of sheetrock in between, or OSB or whatever. Um, and then we've got a support board over here, another jack stud over here, and now I know what you're thinking, you should really trim that out so it looks pretty. So we're about to do that. But I've got a couple questions. If you're anything like me, you probably think a lot. You're probably like, man, during quarantine, I just sat there for a year waiting for my two week quarantine to be over and I think about stuff. So here's a couple things that I think about. Um, snakes. Do they have really long necks or they have really long tails? Like, I don't know if it's like, there's a head and there's a, like a, a head and then a little neck and then a long tail, or is it like a head and then a long neck and a little tail? I don't know. That's a good question. Also, when you're skydiving, it's important to know it's not pair of shoes, it's parachute. So, don't get that one wrong because, uh, you know, it can be devastating. Oh, this is embarrassing. Normally, I don't film myself uh, with my apron on and yeah, mopping, but, you know, I like to do a full service here. So we, uh, <laughs> don't look at that. We got this all turned out, which is beautiful. And as you can tell, there was a wall here. And so, like, my mind is a terrible thing to waste, but now you can walk right through the wall, all the way through this whole way. It's just like you're a ghost or something. I think that's what, what happened here. All right, so um, I'd like to talk to you guys. I know that I've said before that I really enjoy good stories about people that were kind and that were helpful. And so I think it's important to tell those stories again and like uh, give credit to that person and also just inspire other people. So I wanna tell you about a lady that I met when I was 17. It was right after I got saved, and her name was Phyllis Mason, okay? And so I had moved up to Washington State. I bought 20 acres of land. I was building a log cabin, and they were like, you should come to church at this church, and so I did. And let me just tell you about Phyllis Mason. She, um, she was the first person I met that said, everything that I have is God's. My house is not mine, my house is God's and I get to manage it. My car is not mine, my car is God's and I get to manage it. My money, my food, literally everything I have is God's and he gives me the opportunity to manage it. And so, she meant it too. If somebody needed a place to stay, she's like, I've got an extra room, you can stay at my place. If somebody was hungry, she'd cook a meal for them. The church was across the street, she played piano, um, she led the youth group, she had youth group meet in her home. Um, at work, she was just help out everybody that she met and 100% believed that everything she had was God's and that he provided everything that she needed to help all these people and what a blessing that that was. She made, she had two kids, was a single mom and made $7 an hour and still, was 100% generous and 100% kind and made such an impact on me that for the rest of my life I've been like, I wanna be like that. I wanna be the kind of person that believes like literally everything that I have is God's, he's in control, and this is just an opportunity for me to use this to bless somebody else. And so I hope that that inspires you guys. I'd love to hear your stories too. Video them, tell me in person, write them out. All right, love you guys. Bye.